Okay, so let's look into tetracycline. So tetracycline is a broad spectrum antibiotic and what that basically means is that it's an antibiotic that can kill a wide number of um, bacteria, broad spectrum, so a wide number of bacteria. Another thing to keep in mind is that whenever I think of tetracycline, I think of not to take this medication when pregnant. So tetracycline, immediately it should ring a bell in your mind and um, it should be one of the red flags. That we, this would never be prescribed to someone who is pregnant or a child that is under the age of nine. And I'll go over why in a bit. So the way tetracycline works is that when you take the tetracycline, some of it is stored in the enamel and some of it is stored in the dentin. Some of it is also stored in the GCF. The GCF is the gingival curvacular fluid. So this is the tooth, this is the root, this is your gum. And so in the sulcus, or in between the tooth and the gum, we can, some, all of us have gingival curricular fluid. Some people have a lot, some people have a little. And um, if you take the antibiotic tetracycline, it actually goes right in this area here. So it's actually stored or concentrated more in this area here. It is bacteriostatic, which means it slows down the growth of the bacteria. And as I said, it's broad spectrum. So that means it's, um, can, it's able to kill or slow down <coughs> the gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. GI effects, so tummy could get upset. You could also get diarrhea. And this is what can happen. So if you take it when you're pregnant, that your child could have these permanent staining of their teeth. If you, if you, um, you know, give it to children that are younger than nine years of age, this could also happen. And it also affects the bone. It also decreases the bone from growing. So tetracycline is pretty bad on teeth and bones. The next one we're going to look at is clindamycin. So clindamycin is a bacteriostatic which means that it slows down the growth of the bacteria and it's usually only used in gram-positive bacteria. Again, the side effect is always going to be uh, tummy upset. People could be allergic to it. Clindamycin is usually used when someone is allergic to penicillin. So if someone is allergic to penicillin, they won't prescribe an antibiotic from the penicillin family. They'll use a different type of family, and clindamycin could be a, a good choice. Um, we're also going to look at a different antibiotic that's called metron metronidazole. We're going to be looking at a different antibiotic that's called metronidazole. And metronidazole, or flagell, is a bacteria that, if I just go to the next slide, that also has side effects. So it can cause tummy upset. Yes, it could um, affect the kidney. It can cause a dry mouth, right? It could cause a black tongue, the, the unpleasant taste. So there's a lot of side effects to this um, flagell drug. It's usually used in uh, dentistry or could be used in dentistry. And so some things to keep in mind is that when you are looking at um, what antibiotic to prescribe in dentistry, it all depends on what stage the dental infection is. So if you look at a dental infection it's in the stage one, so it's the beginning stage of an infection. In the beginning stage of an infection, it's usually all gram positive, so all purple bacteria. When you look at stage two, we have a mixture of some gram positive bacteria and some gram negative bacteria. When it's in stage three, I know this picture is not the best picture, but it should be all red. It should be um, all gram negative bacteria or a good mixture of gram positive and gram negative, but mostly uh, gram negative bacteria. So dentists know when an infection is stage one, when an infection is stage two, and when an infection is stage three. And based on the stage, they will prescribe appropriate antibiotics. So let's say it's a stage one. If it's a stage one where it's mostly gram-positive, or rather only gram-positive bacteria, the type of um, antibiotic that's prescribed is penicillin V, 
or amoxicillin. If penicillin B and amoxicillin is not a good choice because the client is allergic, then erythromycin or clindamycin. Okay, so penicillin or amoxicillin is the first choice. If they're allergic, it could be either erythromycin or clindamycin that could be given to the client. Stage two of dental infection where we have a mixture of gram positive and gram negative, then what there are many choices. Um, the dentist could prescribe penicillin or amoxicillin. If they're allergic, then erythromycin or clindamycin. If the dentist finds that there's lots of anaerobes or gram negative bacteria, clindamycin is a, a drug of choice, which is very similar, the same one as above. Or they could use this drug, which is known as flagell as well. Free of the dental infection, so it's mostly gram negative bacteria. What they usually want to do is they just want to drain it out. Okay, so instead of um, prescribing an antibiotic, they usually want to try to just, uh, you know, cut the abscess and just drain it all out. And if absolutely needed, then they'll use an antibiotic, which is one of these antibiotics. So over here, we have a breakdown. Usually what you want to do is if it's in the early stages of infection, they usually would give them penicillin or amoxicillin. But if they're allergic to penicillin, we have two choices, erythromycin or clindamycin. If they're late, so if this is stage two or three of the um, infection, then we could give clindamycin or metronidazole or flagell. Okay, so there is a, you know, like a flow list that the dentist use to decide what to prescribe to the clients. It's important that when a, um, antibiotic is prescribed, the patient complies with the instructions, so the patient finishes the entire treatment. Sometimes we can get ineffective antibiotic where an antibiotic that was prescribed didn't work. Sometimes it could be our, our um, fault that the antibiotic didn't work because we didn't do a good job debriding. And one of the things we'll talk about or you'll learn in perio is that if you don't debride well and if you leave behind some calculus, what can happen is that the gums will close up around the calculus and cause an abscess. And that really is our fault because we weren't able to debride properly. One of the last antibiotics that I want to talk about is called vancomycin. This is something that you probably will not see in dentistry. It's usually only seen in hospitals because it's administered IV. And this is if they have, this is actually a very strong antibiotic. It's bactericidal, so it kills the bacteria cell wall. Okay, this is really important because there are some times where we would need to use an antibiotic in dentistry. And this is what I was talking about earlier, where clients will need pre-medication before we can go ahead and debride, or before we can go ahead and even probe. So anything we go sub-G, so if we go sub-gingival, we need to make sure they have antibiotics. And how can we find out who, who needs antibiotics? Well, people who have a prosthetic cardiac valve, so when they had heart surgery, they put like something that doesn't belong into the body, something from outside, they put inside, so like a valve to make the heart uh, work properly. If they have a congenital heart disease, so congenital means they were born with. So if they were born with a heart disease, they may need it. Let me just go back to the previous slide just to let you know what infective endocarditis is. So people who need antibiotic are at risk for infective endocarditis. There's a chance that they could get this um, disease. And what is that? So infective is basically an infection. And endocarditis, so endocarditis basically means that the heart or the lining rather of the heart could get infected and that could you know, uh, be really, really bad for the heart. So they would need an antibiotic to prevent any bacteria from going into the heart. And who needs antibiotic? Those who have a prosthetic cardiac valve, those who were born with a heart disease, or those who were previously diagnosed with infective endocarditis. In the past, we used to give antibiotic a prophylactic antibiotic to those that have um, a prosthetic joint. 
knee replacement so they have like um something from outside into their knee however now it's decided that you don't need it you only need it if the person if the client is immunocompromised if the client is you know has a really weak immune system then you may need it what i like to do is i always like to follow up with the doctor just to be sure that they don't need antibiotics but typically anyone who has a prosthetic joint will not need antibiotic before starting the grindment. Okay, so as a dental professional, you want to make sure that um, you check their medication um, history, you check their health history to see if there's any indication for prophylactic antibiotic. You make sure they're given the right antibiotics. So if they're allergic to penicillin, penicillin or amoxicillin would not be prescribed. An antibiotic should be taken at least one hour before they do the uh, before debridement is done. You can always counsel your client about the side effects with antibiotics and make sure you tell the client that if there are any side effects to notify the dentist so the dentist is aware and can make a note in the chart not to use that type of uh, antibiotic the next time around. It's really important that we explain to the client to take the full course of therapies and not do something like I did where I cut the um, where, where I cut the treatment short, where I cut the course th uh, short. You want to finish the entire treatment. Here is a chart that says, I, I know there's lots of um, antibiotics here. We're only going to be looking at some of them. So we looked at penicillin and penicillin is used for gram positive and gram negative. Same thing with amoxicillin, gram positive and gram-negative bacteria. We looked at clindamycin, which is good for gram-positive and um, somewhat of a gram-negative, but it's, it's, it's mostly for gram-positive, but it could be used for the anaerobes or gram-negative. We looked at some other drugs like erythromycin, and erythromycin is good for gram-negative. Then we have the vancomycin, which is a very strong drug, and that you can see is good for Gram positive and it's also good for uh, anaerobes or gram negative where it's starting to get gram negative so this is just um, a table that kind of helps you look at which antibiotic is effective for which type of bacteria this one is a review so remember we looked at types of um, antibiotics that are good or that are bactericidal in the sense that they can actually kill the bacterial cell wall or kill the bacteria. And then we have some antibiotics that are bacteriostatic, which means I can slow down the growth of the bacteria. And the last slide just shows which bacteria, or sorry, which antibiotic is cheap and which antibiotic are more pricey. And remember, cost is an issue. So we like to usually start with um, low cost antibiotics and then if it doesn't work then move on to more expensive ones but we like to keep it um, over here because it's the most least expensive more clients are willing to buy this type of drug okay that's it